Hi, my name is Barry Sterling Mitchell. I produce the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings and the Bias Plus Reports. Today is August 30th, 2023, and this is Ben and Barry on football. What's going on out there, everybody? This is Ben Dickerson. I'm your co-host. We are one week away. Tomorrow will be exactly one week away from game one of the 2023 NFL season. I cannot wait. You know, I heard that today. Um, one of the guys uh, that's helping the paint, that's doing the painting on my on the new location. Well, all of the guys are football fans, but he was like, "Man, I can't wait." He was like, "He," but he was like, "I don't care about all this preseason. I don't care about this as well, you know." And I had to read. You know, he was asking me about. It. I said, "Well, you know, what we do." You know, I have to keep my eye kind of on what's going on, you know, right. they would talk about it. And because, you know, me, if you're talking about, let's say, American Idol, I'm the guy that I don't care about the singer who can't sing, who thinks he can and making a fool of himself. Everybody wants to make fun of him. I'm, right. I'm there for those people that are barely getting through to the next level, but they have to raise their game. They have, you know what I mean? They have to right. sing better. They have to perform better, all this stuff. And you just you see them improve. Week by week. Right. I like that. The NFL is not exactly like that, but I mean, you know, like cut down day <laughs> coming. And you know, there's guys that are striving in the same way, that same, you know, striving to get to that next level, you know, is in place for so many of these guys. We'll talk about some of those those guys on the back end of the show. On the front end of the show, Ben, you've got some information for Fantasy people? Yes, I do. I have some fantasy information and some information that certain fans of certain teams may not be aware of, probably aren't aware of, but may be very interested in finding out. All right. So without right. further I'm, ado. I'm not the fantasy guy, but I'm interested in finding out. And then when we finish that, I'm going to do – a review of the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings and the Bias Plus Reports. I say that every day when we come on. People go, what the heck am I talking about? But this time we're really going to do it. This time we're going to talk about it and, and where it comes from and how, and how I get to these numbers because, what is it, next week we'll have the first game? Yes, sir. And so we don't have any numbers going in because there's nothing to carry on. Everybody's zero, right. zero, zero. Right. And everybody has an equal opportunity one out of 32 to win the Super Bowl. That's not really true, but it sounds good, don't <laughs> In theory, that is true. Numerically, yes, it is yeah. true. In, in theory, <laughs> that is actually Everybody true. Everybody has a shot, man. Everybody's got the shot. So, all right, Benny, so let's kick it off. Now, all right. Calling your, this, this piece we got here. Yeah, so now let me just, I'll put it to you this way. And if you play fantasy, I think you'll find this extremely interesting, possibly educational. At least if you haven't done your fantasy draft already, you might want to take some notes on this, okay? I'm going to call this Beware of Bye Weeks When You're Drafting. Now, if you were fighting for a playoff spot in week 14 last season, you definitely remember that the NFL scheduled six teams on their bye week on week 14. In fantasy, in normal fantasy, week 14 is the last game of the regular season in fantasy. Week 15, 16, and 17, that's the playoffs and the championships. So for the last week of the regular season, the NFL scheduled six teams on that bye week. That meant that nearly 20% of the league was relaxing at home while you were losing your mind trying to fill out your fantasy lineup in a really important week of the schedule. That had to be really painful. Now, this year it looks like the NFL kind of felt your pain, and they only scheduled two teams off for bye on week 14. Those two teams are the Cardinals and the Commanders. That's much more manageable, especially since week 14 is the regular, is the final regular season week of the most uh, of, of most fantasy leagues. 
And the Cardinals and Commanders aren't loaded with a lot of star players, but they have some players that might be important to your particular team. However, the buys are still going to be annoying. Now, generally speaking, worst of all is week 13. It's the second to last week of the fantasy regular season, and it's going to take up the Chicago Bears, the Buffalo Bills, the New York Giants, the Las Vegas Raiders, the Ravens, and the Vikings. All those teams are off on week 13. That's a tough pill to swallow when you're coming up, getting close to the end of your fantasy season and preparing for your fantasy playoffs or fighting for a fantasy playoff spot. Uh, because that will potentially shut down three of the top six quarterbacks, three of the top six receivers, two top 10 running backs, and three top six tight ends. If you really look at those teams and some of the players on those teams. Now, almost just as bad, break these weeks down, folks. Almost just as bad is week seven. When the Bengals, the Cowboys, the Jets, and the Panthers are off, and the Texans and Titans are off on, no, all of them are off in week seven. Bengals, Cowboys, Jets, Panthers, Texans, and Titans are all off. And then week 10, when the Chiefs, uh, Patrick Mahomes fans, Kelsey fans, Chiefs are off on week 10, the Dolphins, the Eagles and the Rams are all off on week 10. So danger, danger, when you're picking your fantasy team, be aware, week seven and week 10, you're gonna have a lot of good players off. That's gonna be tough. Now, on a positive note, the NFL will have every team in the league playing at least 10 times all season. So weeks one through four, Week 8, 12, and then 15 through 18, every single team is playing. But in between there, there's bye weeks. So you have to be aware of that when you're picking your teams. And, of course, if, if you've ever played fantasy before, and even if you haven't, you have to remember, as you're picking your players, if you notice you have two starting running backs and they both have the same bye week, you're going to have to pick at least – two more running backs that have different bye weeks that can sit in for those guys when they're off. So just remember that. That's very important. Now, let's get into the dangers of Thursday night football. Oh, this is way worse than I thought it was. man. Now, personally, I don't lose a whole lot of sleep about it, but a lot of fantasy guys have uh, come to really hate Thursday night football because teams tend to be worn down from the previous weekend, and uh, production in those games tends to be low. Not always. And usually if you have a star player playing Thursday night, they still usually come through for you. But if you have a kind of a middling player that you're dependent on, could be a problem. To prepare for a Thursday night game, players have to use Monday to recover from Sunday. Then they have to have some sort of practice on Tuesday and Wednesday. And if they're going on the road, they have to travel on Wednesday also. That's tough. So that makes Thursday nights bad enough. Now listen to this. There's seven teams you should be careful of when you're drafting players that may not be obvious stars because each of those teams play on a short week Thursday night game twice this season. Seven teams have two Thursday night games. Those teams are the Bears, week 5 and 10, the Commanders, week 5 and 12, the 49ers, weeks 3 and 12, the Steelers, I said that one real slow so you can write it down there, the Steelers, weeks 9 and 14, but both of the Steelers games are at home. It's a little reprieve for them. The Saints, week 7 and and 16, and the Lions and the Packers, they play each other weeks four and 12. How about that? They both play on Thursday night and they play each other both times. Now, the 49ers 
may have other scheduling dif- disadvantages. Not only are the Niners playing on Thursday night twice, but four of their opponents this season will be coming off the bye when they play them. You know how that goes, right? You play a team that's coming off the bye, they got the extra week to prepare, makes them a little dangerous, especially on defense. Wait a minute. So they you're saying the, that the Niners are going to have a short week and we're going to be playing teams that have a long week. Yes. They not only uh not only do they play on Thursday night twice, but four of their opponents this season. That's not just the Thursday night games. That's this is besides the Thursday night games. Four of their opponents this season will be coming off a bye when they play them. Wow. Now, you can determine whether you think they're dangerous or not. They got the Browns coming off a bye on week six. Bengals coming off a bye on week eight. Jaguars coming off a bye on week 10. And the Cardinals eh, coming off a bye week 15. At least it's not the Chiefs. <laughs> yeah, you're right. This is not, not, not Andy. We right. Know Andy's but, money. <laughs> yeah, but the Bengals and the Jags could be an issue. I don't know. Now, that means that circumstances of six of the 49ers' 17 games put them at some kind of a disadvantage, mm. if you want to look at it that way. You may not want to look at it that way. I don't well, I understand. That makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mainly, four defenses will be better prepared and better rested when the time comes to get ready for them. Now, on the other hand, the ramp, or not on the other hand, kind of the same circumstance, the Rams also have trouble with the bye. Here's their problems. The Rams play four games with their opponents coming off a bye. That's Pittsburgh week seven, at Dallas week eight, at Baltimore week 14, and against Washington at home on week 15. Eh, Pittsburgh, Dallas, Baltimore, those could be issues. I don't know about Washington. Now, This is on top of the Rams playing on the road in three of their first four games. That's not a great way to open up the season. Three road games. They already had a bad year last year. (laughs) Right. Three of your first games on the road. That's a rough start. But they won three games all of last year, right? (laughs) Uh, Barely, yeah. It it wasn't a good year at all. Now, true, they do get uh, a three-game homestand uh, weeks five through seven. But those games come against the Eagles, the Cardinals, and the Steelers. I don't know that the Cardinals are going to give them much trouble, but the Eagles and the Steelers games could be rough. But they do have them at home. Now, even the most winnable game in that stretch is a divisional matchup. That would be the Cardinals game, which we know can be tricky. Now, to close out this whole thing, after talking about all the trouble and tribulation that the Cardinals and the 49ers are going to have. Let's talk about how easy the stinking New York Jets are going to have it. The Jets are the only team to have 10 home games this season. Bam. Per CBS Sports' Jim Breach, it's the second time in 93 years that an NFL team has had 10 games at home. He brought that up. He looked that up. Can you believe it? All AFC teams have nine home games in 2023, and all NFC teams have eight. But the Jets, the stinking Jets, have <laughs> ten. I keep calling them the stinking Jets because it seems like I, I feel what these other players are feeling. It seems like everything is going the Jets' way. They got hard knocks. They got all these games. They got a bunch of TV games. They got Aaron Rodgers. Everything is Jets, Jets, Jets. People are getting tired of it. I know the players are getting tired of it. But anyway, I digress. Well, uh, let me let me add this in there, right? Go ahead. I think that probably the most impactful player on the Jets could be Dalvin Cook. He could be. I There's just a couple played reasons them in for that. Madden. Why do you say that? I just played them in Madden. And I have right. forgot Dalvin was there. You can't okay. forget that was here. <laughs> right. He's off with a 30-yard run at any particular point. I mean, that is a dangerous weapon for 
Aaron Rodgers to have to play fake to. Absolutely. Now here's the here's the thing though. Only the Jets brass know exactly what their running back situation is going to be. Okay, so Brees Hall, who is the de facto starter, and is just playing coming into his second year, uh, he's coming off an ACL. Sometimes running backs and receivers the first year back from an ACL are a little not quite right. So that remains to be seen. Dalvin Cook's coming off a shoulder. This shoulder's been bothering him for some years now, but I think he finally got a surgery that he was put, putting off. So he should be okay. Okay. When each one of them or which one of them will be ready, we'll have to wait till game one to see. So I have no idea which one is, of them is going to be the starter. Either way, it looks like a vicious two-head monster if they're both healthy. Tell me about so it. So we'll kind of have to wait and see on that. Tell me about it. Um, now, the Jets share building uh, MetLife Stadium, of course, with the Giants. So it's not like the team has to board a plane or ride buses or stay at a hotel or anything when they play the Giants. So that's, that's no big deal. They play the Giants on week eight. Um, that's almost like a home game, too. I think the Giants will be the home team, but it doesn't really matter. Um, that game is part of two three-game homestands the Jets will enjoy in 2023. Of course, the Rams had 10 home games last year, and it didn't do them much good, but they were a bad team. The Jets are not a bad team. Uh, oh, here's another added plus. The Jets are one of 12 teams – who won't play a team coming off a bye all season long. That sucks. You guys, the Niners, are playing all these teams coming off the bye. The Jets don't play anybody coming off a bye. How unfair is that? Sounds like the, the, the heavens are lining up, doesn't it? The, the football gods are there on something. I don't know what's going on this year. You know but what anyway, I say about the Jets? The only team I had any family that played for. <laughs> Yeah, well, guess what? They they must be looking down, but they ain't looking down on you. Oh, well, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Anyway, that's all I got on that. Take notes. Good luck in fantasy. I got like 50 teams, but I love fantasy football. I know all this stuff. I have all my notes. I'm aware of what's going on. I hope now you are too. 50 teams, eh? At least. At least 50 teams. Well, that that was that was um informative. That you know, a little scary, you know, for somebody it like that. It sounds probably worse fan. than it is. Yeah, it probably it sounds probably sounds worse than it's actually gonna be for teams like yours that are pretty stacked. But uh it could be a problem for some folks. It could be, man. I mean, like and you know, it's funny, um, I was watching one of the shows and trying to remember the guy. Who's the guy with the you get the hair pulled back and everything? Oh yeah, Nick Wright. Uh, first Nick things Wright. first. Yeah, first Nick Wright first. is really delving into what's going on with the leadership with the Niners relative to quarterbacks, and he says he doesn't think that they have a good process for evaluating quarterbacks there. Okay, and, and you know what I think in terms of. You know, the Trey thing, I thought they were, you know, they had some grand plan and, uh, you know, it, it, it got scuttled and Trey never got any of the, you know, the time. Yeah there's, there's, yeah, there's been a lot of takes that sound somewhere around that where people are feeling like he didn't get a really fair shake, like they didn't, they didn't handle the whole process very well. Now, obviously, the injuries didn't help. The injuries, but, but check this out, Ben. How would this sound? Your starting quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, being backed up by Purdy, and then in development, you got Trey Lance. Right. That's what they had. Right. <laughs> they had that, you know? Right. And, and it's like, you know, they, the way they treated Garoppolo was like, oh, you know? Some of it I heard was he couldn't be on the field because, you know, contract stuff and all of that. If he, you know, if he hurt his pinky, they'd be on the line, whatever, whatever. But still in all, they never had a really better option than Garoppolo. 
You know what I mean? And so, and I didn't think he was that expensive. I think he could have got Garoppolo for probably 70, 60% of what some of the other guys were getting paid. I agree. So I, I, I truly would be more than happy to stay there. Yeah, yeah. I truly don't understand it, though. All right, Benny. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for that. That was very informative. We're going to switch gears now, and we're going to talk about the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings and the Bias Plus Reports. say that every time we introduce the show and this and as i said people probably wonder what the heck is this guy talking about unless they've been following the show but i'm going to go through what it is is and because it's our tool for breaking down the season week by week by week you know who we think is going to win who we think is favored you know i have the numbers which say one thing and then you get to you have your opinion and all your background to 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 um, counter or go along with that information. So let's talk about the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings. The Sterling Net Point Power Rankings and the Bias Plus reports. Let's start, Benny, with the rankings themselves. So this is from Week 17 and 2023, and. This you'll see in green with the letters. These are, are teams that made the playoffs. One of the things I wanted to point out right away is just in our rankings, you will see that uh, seven out of the 14 teams uh, that make the playoffs are right there in your top eight of your net point rankings. So ANP stands for average net points. A APF average point four. APA average points against an average turnover differential is ATLD. And this is this is the foundation of what we talk about because as you know, I like to say no no team has ever won a, a football game based on the amount of yards that they get. They always win based on the amount of points that they put up. Absolutely. So we when when you look at the 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 uh, Sterling net point power rankings, it's our way of being non-biased. Straight numbers, nothing to do with, you know, your opinion or my opinion. It's what the numbers are, and we track those numbers. And we've had as as high as, well, we've had an overall um, uh, rate uh, of being correct at about 64%, somewhere. Right. Um, one particular week, and I think it was this week, we were at 75%, but we added something. And I'll talk about oh, That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, most most gamblers would tell you they pray for that. It, it, it's crazy. So let's just look at your top eight here. Average net points, week 17, including week 17, says so through week 17. Your Buffalo Bills were number one with 10.5. My Niners were 9.3 average net points. And again, net points and average turnover differential can be positive or negative. So we're dealing with all positive numbers here. You see Philly, there's plus 7.9. Kansas City, plus 6.8. How predictive was that? <laughs> number four, mm. number five. <laughs> Cincinnati at 5.7. Jacksonville, plus 3.1. And Baltimore, plus 2.9. So obviously, they don't go by just net points, or Jacksonville would have probably been in there, but uh, not at this particular point. So your points for, these, this is your scoring. OK, this is your average points per game. And one of the things we talk about, you know, is especially with Dallas, was the fact that Dallas was putting up points. You know, they might yeah. not have gotten where you thought they should get. And, and I, I see Dak take a lot of guff for that, heat for that. But 28.8 points per game, they ain't nothing to sneeze at. Right. Uh, Kansas City coming in at 29.1, Philly at 28.4. Points per game. Buffalo even 28, Detroit 27.1. So again, averaged out over 17 weeks. These are the amount of points that these teams are averaging. Now, on the defensive end, this is the number of points on average that teams are allowing. So that's the allowed points or the points, average points against. San Francisco, number one at 16.5. Buffalo, 17.5. Baltimore, 18. The Jets, and this is one of the reasons why people have so much uh, uh, hope that the Jets can do something. Here they are in 
Fourth place, defensively only giving up 19.1 points per game. So I guess the question is, if they can keep that up, can Aaron give them an extra few points beyond that? 20, 25, 26, 28 points per game, and the Jets would be looking good. Is Dallas at 19.8, Cincinnati 20.4, and Tampa Bay 20.5. So those are your top eight teams. Again, 32 teams in the league. We break them down into groups of four at eight apiece. Your average turnover differential, Dallas took the top um, place for that at, at plus 0.7. San Francisco and Philly came in at plus six. New England and Baltimore came in at plus, again, excuse me, plus 0.6. New England and Baltimore plus 0.4. And Detroit, the Chargers, and Jacksonville plus 0.3. Now, what do we do with all of this information? Well, first of all, we look at the net points. That's the differential between your points for and your points against. So let's look at a team uh let's say we'll take well let's take dallas for example right yes i was going to say let's take dallas for example <laughs> coming in at 28.8 points per game that they're scoring but they're allowing 19.8 points per game so uh 28 minus 19 uh, what's that 10 something like that pretty much close close um, and then you add in the, the, the fraction there, and it comes out on average to 9.1. So they're scoring more than they're giving up. So their net points is going to be positive. If they were giving up more than they were scoring, the net points would be negative. All right? So we rank teams by average net points. That's what we do. And that's kind of how it works out. So we don't rank them. They rank themselves. This is the result right. of what they've done um through their weeks and we just track it we just track it and we give it back to you now here's nine through 16 benny i'm not going to go through all of them but again and your points against uh you start to see some of the teams that are a little further down you got the chargers and the giants qualifying for the uh, playoffs vegas and cleveland being eliminated uh seattle averaging 24.3 points per game all right, that's not bad. That's uh, um, Gino and company, right? Right. And we also came up with something called um, the, the the ranking differential. The ranking differential. The, in some of these teams, there really the difference between what the difference between the points for points for and points against. So the let's, disparity. Yeah, let's look at Seattle, for example, right? I'm going to right. sit down, boom, right? Here's Seattle at 24th defensively mm -hmm. and 9th offensively. Right. So that's what, a 50, big. A 50 big. ranking differential? Yeah, that's big. That's pretty big, you know? Usually you don't you, you want it close, especially if you're in the top. Now, for example, San Francisco has a ranking differential of uh, first and seventh. So that's only six, all within the top eight. Now, some teams have ranking differentials, and they're in the bottom of the pile. So here you see Denver only scoring 16 points per game. That's why they got a new coach. <laughs> you want to know why? For they're sure. You got Russell Wilson paying Russell a ton of money, and you got the lowest scoring team in the league, lower than Houston and Indianapolis by a point. Wow. All right. Now, wow. Now, defensively, Chicago came in last. So, you know, they're talking about what can Justin Fields do? What can Justin Fields do? What can uh, Chicago do to get that defense better? You know, let me see. Offensively, where's Chicago at? All right, they were 23rd. They were averaging 19.6 points per game. So that's nothing to write home about. They're giving up 27. They're scoring 19. Obviously, that's not going to get it done. Right. And as I said, the difference, the average net points and the average turnover differential can be both positive and negative. So here you have the teams that are running in the negative. So you want to know how you get in the negative? Well, you, you allow more points than you score. Simple as that. 
and that'll put you in a negative. Yes, sir. Interesting. When we're talking about uh, the disparity between scoring and uh, points for and points against ranking, yeah. I love to use I love to use Denver as as an example. So we had Denver there in points for. They're in last place. Where were they in points against? Points against Denver? Yeah, where did they finish? Tenth. Tenth. So that's a big disparity. But if you remember, during the season, and this is the end of the season, this is week 17. During the season, they were as high as first or second. Yes, they were. It was amazing. Their yes, defense was playing great, mm -hmm. but they couldn't put no points on the board. That's right. That's right. And that caused them to lose games. Caused them to lose a lot of games. You can't win if you can't score, but they were playing some top-notch defense, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. All right. So that's the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings. This is what we present during the season. We'll share these, this information with you on a week by week basis as these teams put their, you know, put their thing down and get their scores in. We'll come back the next week and we'll show you where they stand on average net points, average points for, average points against, and average turnover differential. Now, let's talk about the bias plus reports. So now that you've seen the Sterling net point power rankings, the bias plus reports is what we use when we have a matchup. The example I like to use is you have two teams. One team is averaging plus 25 points per game. In other words, they're winning their games by an average of 25 points. So they're really spanking teams. Okay. So now that's a team. They're going to play the B team. The B team is not doing bad. They're winning by an average of five points per game. Okay. Okay. They're winning, but they're winning by five, much smaller margin. They're going to play the A team winning by 25. All we do is subtract those two teams to find the difference, which is the bias. 25 minus five is 20. So the bias is 20, and it favors the team with the larger net points. Again, we don't, you know, it's not our opinion who's favored. Who's favored is based on what they've actually done relative to points. So, in this particular example, Kansas City was playing Las Vegas, right? The Kansas, the net point bias favored um, Kansas City. The turnover differential favored Kansas City. Now, in this next, these last two columns, we have something called the Pythagorean bias plus. That is a, um, <laughs> call it a suffix where I kind of just. Kept it small. You know, Pythagorean is such a big word, take it off the screen. But what happened is this, Benny. When we first started out, we were looking at the net points. Right. And then we decided to add turnovers into it because we know turnovers right. equal points. They make, they make a difference. But we didn't know how many points. Right. So we basically were just adding turnover differential and points, which as a mathematician always hurt my soul because we were adding two different things. Mm -hmm. And really, you kind of can't do that, right? But then we found about the about the uh, Pythagorean, right. but it actually came out of baseball, where they right. were looking at the differential and they came up with a formula, get the formula to kind of determine what teams were going to be favored through the season based on the runs, runs given up versus runs scored. So right. it's, it's all all about scoring. The bottom line is the turnovers came out to equal four points in the Pythagorean That's crazy. calculation. That's crazy. That's crazy. So all we did is we took our bias, our turnover differential bias, in this case was only 0.1, and we multiplied it by four. So there you go. Now it's 0.4. You add that to the net points of 7.1, and you come up with a Pythagorean bias score of 7.5. So it's not super high math. I don't need AI to calculate all of this, even though I probably, if I could get them to do it for me, it would be <laughs> a big help. I might have to I might have to really look at that a little more closely. But that blows my mind. Just think about it. If you ask the average football fan, 
How much do you think a turnover? We used to argue about this all the time. Yeah. Remember? How much do you think a turnover is worth points wise? Who would come up with four? <laughs> I would, off the top of my head, I would probably say, I would hope that if both teams were pretty good, that if one team got a turnover, they could at least turn it into three, possibly six. Well, guess what? Four <laughs> between three and six. Somewhere between three and six, yeah. Right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Pythagorean expectation, and that's what they they kind of called it. And uh, you can look it up online. You know, you look it up on YouTube, you know. And as I said to Ben, uh, we don't get the chance to use this in the off season, because well, I used it a little bit for the USFL and for the XFL. I didn't go crazy mm -hmm. like I do with the NFL. Um, so I had to go back and I had to go, man, what was that Pythagorean <laughs> expectation again? And how do we get to that? So I had to go back and recalculate and look at all my spreadsheets to kind of get an idea. But now you see kind of where we come up with this. So when we say, in this case, Kansas City is favored by a bias plus score of 7.5 implicitly it means it'll it, you won't we won't say pythagorean we, we're gonna not drop that in on every conversation we don't want to scare the children away so you'll hear <laughs> you know uh the bias plus score is what it is but know that the pythagorean uh expectation has been calculated into that the final bias plus score so i think that's it Oh, yeah. So, so this is what you'll see. This is what you'll see when, we, when we're actually doing the presentation. You'll see uh, Pro Football Bias Plus Reports, NFL Week, Chiefs and Raiders Bias Plus score 7.5 favors the Chiefs. So that's all of that calculation. That's the graphic. And then from there, the conversation starts. <laughs> right. And that's when I come in. Now, all of this is all numbers. No opinion, no conjecture. After this, then here I come to upset the apple cart with opinion and conjecture. <laughs> Basically, the report and the numbers are saying that the Chiefs will win the game because they're favored by at least seven and a half points. At that point, I will then say, yes, I agree, the Chiefs will win. Or no, I think the other team will win. And then we kind of match each other up after the games get played. So that's where the fun comes in for me. But um, the, the, the Bias Plus reports, as you can see, I, I wouldn't call it scientific, but then again, it, it kind of is. The thing is, football is a game of numbers. And Scoring is extremely important. And I know people look at all the different aspects of the game and turnovers and all that. Well, we take all that stuff into consideration, put the numbers together, and we come out with this. And I tell you what, we've been really, really accurate, super accurate. I don't win all that. Sometimes I beat it. Sometimes I don't. But we're real close. Hey. You're yeah. able to take that information, add it to what you know, and then come up with your own conclusion. And right. that's what it's there right. for. That's really what it's there for. It's, it's just fundamental information. Now, this right. what we're looking at right now, Ben, is my actual blog site, the Sterling Net Point Power Ranking blog please site. bigger? Can I make it bigger? Yes, please. <laughs> Let's see here. You might not get the whole thing on, but if we can get part of it uh, uh. that's bigger but i'm saying that print is really really small bro. well it depends well i just wanted to give people but more let so people know yeah, that yeah. there is a website that you can go to it's there and, yes and at least all this to... information is there the sterling net point power rankings at sterling s-t-e-r-l-i-n-g n-p-p-r dot com and you'll reach this, and all of the previous blogs are there. And also, this is where I post the intriguing game of the day, Benny. 
or of the ah. Lord. So you'll come here and you'll see Ben has already given his opinion, but I'm going to take that information and apply it to some one particular game and come up with my own conclusions after utilizing that information as deeply as I know how. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do. And that's called the intriguing game of the week. We have that. And then also, Benny, depending on what happens, we celebrate people who overcome the fact that they're no longer favored with, with the bias plus <laughs> buster of the week. So if it's, it's always like, one. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? There's always one. So here we had the Chiefs and the Raiders. The Chiefs were favored by seven and a half, right? Now, let's say that the Raiders won that game, right? And of all the teams who were not favored, um, all the other teams won by less than 10. The Raiders won by 20. Because they had the largest win differential, for a non-favorite team, they would become the bias plus buster of the week. They so busted the bias. They busted the bias. And that's okay. It is what it is. We All we do is put the numbers down and find out how that all follows up. So that's that's really the, the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings and the bias plus reports with the intriguing game of the week and finishing it off with the bias plus buster of the week. So look for those conversations regular schedule and we also carry that through to the playoffs and the super bowl so it's always fun to look at it especially when you get to the super bowl i think that we favored the eagles last year ben i, I do believe. yes absolutely they were the better team <laughs> they were the better i agree <laughs> they were the better team <laughs> you know so i mean it, look you just look at how they had they had done that and and i mean once hurts got back you know they were on a roll and it, it didn't, it didn't, well, one thing I'll say, it threw the numbers out of whack when they played my Niners because once we lost quarterbacks, the score just got really lopsided. It yeah. kind of threw it out a little bit, but that's how it works. You know, it goes on that. We we can't calculate everything. And even the ones who think they can don't always get it right, you know? Right. So that's that. All right, then, Benny. A lot happened. A lot happened this week, Benny. It was cut down day. Let's take a look at the Ben and Barry on football Facebook page. And let's talk. Blood about was running in the streets. Blood was running in the streets, <laughs> man. I'm telling you. So much happened all at once, and we have a link here for tracking those NFL cuts. So let's talk, Benny, about some of the some of the more notable cuts and things that you saw that maybe stood out. Things that I saw. Well, for example, well, first of all, let's give some some love. We always give some love to our young boy Corey Clement. Right. Corey was a victim of uh, those cuts. Oh, was he? I didn't yeah. know that. But you yeah. know what? I was, I was, I had a couple of fantasy drafts this week. I actually had one every night except for tonight. Um, and I was looking at some information and I was thinking maybe I'll grab Corey on the team or two late in the draft. And I saw some information that said that he was slipping down the depth chart. Wow. And it wasn't looking good for him. So he actually didn't make the 53? No, he didn't make the 53. Um, and so the question is, what is the strategy of the NFL teams nowadays? It's looking like they're cutting people and then letting them go. For example, the Patriots cut Bailey Zappi, right? Right. And they look up, they, they hardly got anybody backing up, but he, they're going to let him go to waivers, and then they're going to put him on the practice squad. And I think that's what they're – they're using the practice squad a lot more strategic that's, these days. Here's the thing. they got to put him on waivers for a week and allow other teams to have the ability to pick them up, which would be good for the player if another team picks him up. But if they don't, they bring him back, put him on the practice squad. So Zappi and the other guy who's a receiver, 
but can also play quarterback. His name is Cunningham. Right. The Patriots want to do that. So they'll probably do the same thing with Corey. The good thing for Corey is he plays special teams. So guys like him are always going to be uh, valuable to a particular team. If there's a guy that doesn't play special teams but plays the same position as Corey, which is running back, and they have to choose, Corey will usually get the nod because he can double up and play special teams. Well, Melvin Gordon also got cut. <laughs> so that's, he that's ain't no Wisconsin backs right there. Two Wisconsin backs who had a, a rough uh, 2023 preseason right there. Um, guys who really did it big when they were in college. And, and Gordon was kind of the big name coming out. Yeah. So I was surprised. And he doesn't really play special teams. No. <laughs> he doesn't play special teams. So guess what? He'll go home. He'll stay in shape. And he'll wait for injuries and he'll wait for a phone call. Yeah. Corey yeah. will be on a practice squad somewhere. That's what I'm thinking. You know, Corey's going to be on a practice squad somewhere. Um, and, uh, you know, and he'll be he'll, he'll be okay. He'll be okay. Right. Yeah, no, he'll no be doubt. okay. No doubt. What else you got? Who else got cut or got moved around? Uh, cut, 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 cut. Oh, let's talk about the Eagles real quick. Marcus Mariota didn't have a real good showing. Uh, I think people were happy when he first came over to Philadelphia as the backup. They're thinking, okay, kind of same mold as, as Jalen Hurts. He should be a good backup. He's been a starter. Didn't look good in the preseason, bro. Didn't look good at all. Uh, he did not survive. He got cut. Um, oh, he did Chiefs get cut. Yes, he did get cut. The Chiefs also cut uh, – what is this? What happened here? I was trying to bring something up. What? I didn't do that. Oh, the Chiefs cut um, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Really? A running back who showed a lot of promise but kind of lost his edge once uh, Pacheco got there. Yeah, Pacheco was just running wild, man. Pacheco was a real hard runner, and Edwards Hilaire was a pretty good running back who didn't catch passes very well. Sometimes if you're a good pass catching back, that'll give you an edge if you happen to be in a competition. That he was not. So it looks like Pacheco, who might be a year younger, a year or two younger, and maybe catches passes out of the backfield a little bit better. That gave him the edge. And I don't remember Edwards Hilaire ever uh, being mentioned as a guy who would play special teams. So, yeah, he's kind of out of there. Uh, I'm trying to think of some. Oh, here's a notable one. Colt McCoy. <laughs> Colt McCoy was the backup to Kyler Murray in Arizona. I liked Colt McCoy, real good college quarterback, basically making a career of being a backup. Colt McCoy got cut. Now, the whole quarterback situation in Arizona is up in the air. They got, wait, I got to, I'm sorry, I got to dig through my phone on this one. I, I hate to do this. Were they the ones with P.J. Walker? I think P.J. Walker's part of this mess. Joshua Dobbs, who was supposed to be the backup to Deshaun Watson, is now in the mix with the Arizona Cardinals, along with some dude I never heard of because Kyler Murray is not ready to start the season. Are you talking about They're Toon? Two, yes, two. Cartoon. <laughs> I, I was cartoon. That's how I was remembering. He actually played pretty good in the preseason. He played good in the preseason. He played pretty good. And let me but tell you, you got to remember preseason, you got backup linemen, 
You're playing a backup defense. Da, 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 da. Sometimes. We got to see. So that's crazy because all the crazy talk we had weeks ago in reference to quarterback uh, controversies and competitions, this is a real one. This is a serious competition. We have no idea who's going to be starting Arizona Cardinals quarterback. I don't. I have no idea. They're well, going to have to hash this out between now and next week. Absolutely. And, and you, you start to wonder, it's like, you guys have one week to hash this out. All this time that you've had up to this point, and you, he is still not settled. But look, P.J. Walker is going to the Browns practice squad. Okay, so Joshua Dobbs leaves the Browns, goes to the Cardinals, and then P.J. Walker, who is basically just cut loose by Carolina, right? He goes to the Browns. He goes to the Browns. Okay, okay cool. Another um, notable, as far as I was concerned, because I know you know, as you keep a, you keep track of your Penn State guys. Well, Trace he's McSorley got cut. Oh, Trace McSorley, where's he at? He's nowhere now. He oh, just, he got cut. He's in that limbo. <laughs> oh, geez. he's hoping. He is hoping that he does get picked up um, somewhere. Uh, so yeah, that was another uh, one that I saw that I was like, oh my goodness, see me Christmas. Uh, they're just cutting people left and right. Um, so yeah, uh, that that's that's that right there. Uh, I'm trying to think of anybody else that I wanted to bring up. We have the article, the article lists a number of people who got cut, um, some mm -hmm. of which you know have gotten jobs since but a lot of that bulk information is right there so let's we'll take a look at that okay. Man. I, before before we switch over before we uh -huh. switch, switch gears i got a little bit more on the cardinal situation so joshua dobbs comes over to the cardinals along with a seventh round pick from the browns colt mccoy's out of there so murray's not ready Fifth round rookie Clayton Toon, David Blau, longtime backup, and Jeff Driscoll, longtime backup, will battle. So we got Toon, Blau, Driscoll, and Dobbs. All four of them will battle for the starting quarterback job for the Arizona Cardinals. What a mess! <laughs> what a mess! And a former Eagle coordinator is the head coach. Oh, God. Much less. <laughs> oh. So there you go with that. Um, I, I had a couple of things that I wanted to share, Benny. Let's take a quick look here. Uh, let me see. Are we done with cuts? Unless you, I mean, you can always bring it up. This is all miscellaneous. What you got? Let me, you got just give me this last, let me just give you this last one. Sure. Hey, Jaguars head coach Doug Peterson. Oh my had God! To How cut his get son. It? He cut, he had his, to cut son. his son. Oh, his son was a tight end, right? Yes, his son was a tight end. I don't think his son expected to make the team anyway. I, I don't think that that's it's a big surprise, but it is kind of unusual to cut your son. They were soft talking about it on the, on the news, and they were saying at least his son got to experience the '90s yes. and the preseason. Yes. And I'm sure he's don't. thankful. You know, yeah, I'm sure he's thankful for that. I'm waiting to see if his son becomes some type of a coach. That's a possibility. You know, position coach all of a sudden. You know, so That's, that would be the next step. That would be the next step if, you, if your dad cuts. Unless you're going to go back to the XFL and the USFL and, and tear it up. It depends. You know, it depends if he I if he, he feels like he's a good enough player. And he wants to make some kind of an impact as a player before he moves on with his career, then that's a good possibility. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the other thing I thought was very interesting, or at least kind of amusing, I'm sure you've tracked him. I don't know where he is on your fantasy list, but Deuce Vaughn. Hmm. Deuce Vaughn, he might be the shortest player in the NFL right now. Mm -hmm. 
If you haven't had a chance to see him run, I'm going to play this real quick just so you can. He only has some preseason highlights, so it's really short. Let's go. <laughs> now oh, let me look at this oh nice oh nice he will make you miss in the phone booth oh that's nice and that's what I thought they should do with him all along although they made him a kick returner actually running the ball but they made him a kick returner too right say that again they had him returning kicks yeah yeah he reads blocks really well, but his moves are so quick. Absolutely amazing. So what I heard about him is he's very reminiscent of Darren Sproles, but not quite as fast. He's got the quickness. You know, he's got the foot quickness, but not the, the straight ahead speed as Darren Sproles. But size wise and move wise. Very reminiscent of Darren Sproles. That's that's what I heard. Well, like I said, that, that guy will make you miss in the phone booth, man. I mean, it's absolutely amazing, you know, when I watched him do do his thing. Uh so you know, there you go. We have that on our Facebook page. I wanted to kind of share that real quick. So anyway, Benny, um, yeah, Mr. Vaughn, he made the 53 man roster. So he'll be there, but he's listed at like as like the third, fourth running back. They have like five running backs in their depth chart right now. They do? So, yeah, yeah. They got a lot of running backs, I, Dallas does, right now. I have to take a look at that. Yeah, yeah. Which, when you consider the fact that um, Pollard. Pollard has never been, what, what do you call them? The uh, bell cow. The bell cow. Yeah, yeah. He, he's never been a bell cow. So it's probably good that they've got some extra backs sitting there waiting to see how he makes it. Yeah, probably. Drawing. I think he's going to do okay as a three-down back. I think he'll be fine. Uh, he catches the ball pretty well out of backfield, and he's a, he's a pretty good runner between the tackles. Um, I think they will use other backs to try to keep him fresh. He's not as much as a, of a bruiser as Zeke was. Um, it'll be interesting to see how Dallas uses him, but I, I expect him to have a really good year. Like I said, he he will slip through. <laughs> so yeah, you know. And if I'm not mistaken, he'll be a free agent next year. So yeah, probably so. Yeah, he's got a lot to prove. All right, Benny. That's all I got. What about you? I got one more thing. Okay, another mess. Indianapolis Colts, this whole issue. First of all, the issue with their quarterback, we talked about this last week. They've made a decision that they're going to go with Anthony Richardson. I'm not against it. I'm actually for it. Unfortunately, I think they're making a mistake in trying to get rid of uh, their running back, Jonathan Taylor. I understand his frustration with his contract issues. And I understand his frustration with the owner and some things that were said. I don't know if this stuff can be fixed. I don't know how angry he is, although I'm sure his anger and frustration is pretty great when he asks for a trade. How crazy does this sound? The Miami Dolphins contacted the Colts and told them they were interested in making a trade for Jonathan Taylor. And the Colts told them, you got to give us Jalen Waddle. Waddle? You want Waddle? No, not with the running back room that the Dolphins already have. They'd be crazy to do that. Yeah, no. Uh -huh. It's not like they're real needy. At running back, they're not. Right, they're, they're not. not. That's uh, what I call them, Niner what, Niner East? <laughs> yeah. 
But but it's just it's so, it's so sad that this team would blatantly say you are not worth top money, but we want top compensation back if we trade you. Even That's, the silly even the silly Raiders went on this sign. <laughs> They're running back. <laughs> well, yeah, all that mess they went through with Josh Jacobs was so unnecessary. Uh, completely, completely. So unnecessary. But I'm glad he did come back, and I'm glad he just signed. But unfortunately, he's in the same boat as Saquon. They could, in fact, tag him again next year. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, maybe Kirk Cousins will give a class on how to make a jillion dollars. <laughs> When you're getting tagged <laughs> repeatedly, all he did he took the tags and he ball. He took the tags and ball. He said, "Screw it, I'll and take survive. the tags and I'm a ball out." You that's can only right. tag me twice. I'm patient. You know what I mean? And that's a that's some nice money. That's top dollar right there. That's pretty right. top dollar. Right. <laughs> Anything else? That's it. That's it. Well, as I usually say, this is Ben and Barry on football. You can reach us at www.benandbarryonfootball.com. We're on Facebook. We are on Instagram. And, of course, we're on YouTube. And we are uh, podcasting on Spotify and all of your favorite podcasting locations. Thanks for following. Please leave comments and suggestions. Our hashtag is football is life. All right, Benny, that's it for me. That's it for me. Peace out.